can satisfy me in five minutes, I might let you leave. He has the distinction of being the only actor to be on both the number one Netflix movie and the number one Netflix series at the same exact time. He was in the movie Kate, which was oh. the number one movie, and Squid Game, which was the number one series. So please give it up with no further ado, Mr. Jeffrey Giuliano. you doing sir very well indeed pleasure to be here man it is good to see you it is early in the morning you are in thailand how is everything out there for you uh yeah it's it's another day in paradise it's a lovely you know i've been here for a long time and it's my base and my home and yeah i love thailand man man you've got your own little vip compound out there huh i do yeah actually i do i, I i've been here for about five years and Got a big, yeah. So the answer is yes, we do. <laughs> no, no, no. Well, you, okay, let's say, you know, let's not beat around the bush. There's a lot of people online. People are, are excited to see you tonight. Um, you know, you are on the number one. Um, you may have heard me give you the introduction. You are on both not the number one movie and the number one series on Netflix. How do you get such an incredible distinction like that? That Did you, do you have the, you know, are you working with some kind of fairy or uh, is there something going on, some special voodoo magic? Well, whatever it is that's going on now, it wasn't going on for the last 15 years. I can tell you that. <laughs> this, is well, the new stuff. this is a new thing that's happening. Um, no, yeah. I mean, I, I made 28 movies before Squid Game. I was under the impression this was just another assignment. The money was a little bit better than normal. Um, and when I was impressed by the set, it was a very big and beautiful set, but I thought, well, you know, okay, it's, it's going to be kind of the same thing that I've been doing and it'll get a certain amount of acclaim with, you know, I won't probably see too much of that, but the producers will like me and they'll invite me to do another show. Right. And cause that's the way it's gone for 15 years. The public didn't have any awareness of me whatsoever other than my family, but the, the people in the business like what I do. So they would ask me to do another movie and this has been going on for some time. Right. Um, I had no idea that that screen game would be anything more than just another assignment. Right. Right. Now being that uh, you are in Thailand instead of, you know, obviously a lot of actors um, are, you know, we're used to them being from Hollywood or, you know, maybe even the UK or something like that, but being in Thailand, does that open you to, to unique opportunities? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> Were I to go to Hollywood and base myself there, I'd be in competition with people who are exactly my type. I mean, if they said they want someone like Jeffrey Giuliano, they could get 10,000 people that were almost exactly or very, very, very similar. So I'd be competing against so many established actors that, you know, have personal relationships with casting directors and producers, maybe married, who knows? They're going to use their friends. Um, and, you know, not, not always, but there's quite a bit of that nepotism in Hollywood. Right. So by being based in Asia, look, there's not too many good actors here. So I get right. way more work than I would ever there. And I get almost all the work that comes around here. Right, right. I mean, we're, we're only talking about two, you know, just two of the major hits. But you were also in Train to Busan as well. Is that correct? Yeah, I was in Peninsula Train to Are Busan, which is the companion piece to that that's actually one of my favorite parts um i always play the bad guy but here i was particularly good bad guy there was an interesting thing about peninsula about a week before um i was to do that show in seoul korea i fell down on the sidewalk and broke my front tooth oh and i thought oh man what am i what am i and then i said wait a minute this broken front tooth will right. be fantastic for the part. And if you look carefully, and I made sure I smiled as well. <laughs> you know, a lot, you know? So right. um, it's fixed now. But at the time, it was all jagged and broken. And I thought, okay, so then I, I that gave me something to work with. This guy's a drug addict. And, you know, people who take a lot of hard drugs, their teeth fall out. So right. he's probably a co coke head or a crack head or something. And it really helped me to find the character. And I asked the director, 
I said, do you want me to fix this before I come? And he said, well, it's up to you. So I said, no, let's go with the broken tooth. Right. So that was, no, I, I, you know, I'm, I just love Peninsula. I think it's a really good movie. It was quite well received. And I have three movies now on, on, on Netflix. I have Kate with Woody Harrelson, which is what you're referring to as the, the number one uh, movie at the moment. Right. And I uh, have Peninsula, and indeed I have Squid Game. So yeah, it's a good, it's a good string of luck um, that you could never engineer. It's right. just one of those things, like a car crash. Right, right. But Laughing. now, now your name is all over there. And I also want to mention, I am very excited about this too because you also run the only Facebook uh, Squid Game fan page that is run by a Squid Game uh, actor. Right. Well, look, let me explain it to you. It's pretty simple. That was those actors. They're, they're, OK, there was 14 stars. Principal cast is the official sort of way of saying it of Squid Game. I was number 14, but I am indeed a star of Squid Game. But yes. the last one with the smallest part, but the biggest part for any Westerner. Um, the other 13 got a lot of money. I did very well, but I mean, they got a lot of money is I think the lowest pay was 500,000 and it was the star got, I think $2 million. So, so I was not in there. I was in six figures, but I wasn't, I wasn't there anyway. So those guys are Korean. They don't speak really any English. Cause I was, you know, struggling around with them when we were in the canteen having lunch and stuff. So it was just not too much after hello, how are you? And my name is. This kind of thing. Where are you from? Um, so it's very, you know, they they don't speak English. They're they're big, huge stars in Korea now. They they you know they get millions of dollars for their films. So they're not going to come out of there. They're, they're right. not able to come out of there because they don't speak English, and they will not come out of there. They're in their Korean Korean environment, which is great for them. So right. if and there's another couple of guys that were featured extras that had like one or two lines each, who were VIP. The other two VIPs, uh, you know they. They're very negligible in terms of their uh, contribution to the show, although nice guys for sure. Um, and uh, they don't want anything to do with it. So if anyone in the world forever wants to <laughs> watch Squid Game, they have to come to me by definition. You're never going to see any cast member for a Squid Game coming to any Comic Con or anything. And I'm doing all of those things. I'm going on a perpetual world tour starting with a, a, a show in, uh, in Bangkok on the 11th of December, and then I, I don't intend to stop for a long time. That is absolutely fantastic. And, you know, we we were talking about, you know, kind of the con world. And, you know, you see, if you go to cons now, you'll see actors from movies that have been out, you know, 10, 15, 20 years ago, um, still being able to get out there and meet their fans. Are you excited about getting out there and getting to meet some well, of the people that, yeah. you, that, that you've... Uh, yeah. Of course, I am. <laughs> of course I am. Yeah, it's, it's it's something that, you know, when you're an actor, you you think about, I mean, you don't do it for that reason if you're a real actor. Um, but but it's important that people like what you do and can can kind of somehow um identify with, with your work. And it it's it's a great pleasure and it's something that I'm very much looking forward to. And you know, so much so that I told my agent just last night, uh, look, just hold off on the movies for a while. Let's just let's just do this for a while and, and see see where this leads. So. So, yeah, it's 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 an opportunity that only God can create for somebody. Right. This is uh this has been absolutely fantastic. Right. And who would have guessed that kind of everything would kind of converge at one time. Now, I want to let people know a lot of people may not be familiar because, of course, um, for for a lot of people, Squid Games is their first uh, look at you. But you're not only an accomplished actor, but you are also a director. Uh, you are a writer, uh, cinematographer. You 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 wear a lot of different hats, my friend. I've never had a job outside the arts ever since I took my master's degree in acting in 1976. So I'm one of the few lucky ones that um, has been able to work as an artist all these years. Now I made. The biggest impression from writing books on the Beatles from 1984 to 2006, and that was uh, very lucrative and gave me all kinds of opportunities and let me see the world on other people's dime, and it was it was a real great ride. I I never intended to be a writer, 
it's just something that happened. And, um, you know, I, I, I wrote 32 books all together. They're still wow. out. You can buy them on Amazon, but it, it wasn't anything that I it wasn't my, my, in my heart so much to do. It was something that presented itself. You know, if somebody once said about me, it was an, in their mind, an insult. Jeffrey never saw an opportunity he didn't like. Right. I, I, I don't see anything wrong with that. Right, you know, right, right. it's absolutely true. You know, if I see something come along, I just go with it. You know, right, I think right. that's more to the fact that I'm willing to flow with things than, you know, have predetermined ideas about who I am and what it is I do. Right, right. That, that's, that's a beautiful life philosophy. Uh, uh, if more people could adopt it. <laughs> I'm hanging around with you. Yeah, I see. You know? So, right, I mean, see. that's something right there. Hey, see, I have the same philosophy. My when I when I first contacted you, I, my thought was he can only say no. <laughs> so I want to ask you: um, Would you say um, is, is music a big part of your life? Um, obviously, no. you've written a lot of books. No, no, Do you no play not any, any musical instruments. No, no. I, look, I I wrote those thirty-two books mostly on the Beatles and the Stones and stuff. Um, it was a big thing to me growing up because it was the only thing that was accessible to me. As a guy from a lower middle class background, you know, there was music and music was like just everywhere. It was a religion. It was very important in those times. And uh, uh, it used to be so. I mean, I'm sure you're surprised for me to say, no, music is not important to me now. It's not important to me in any co uh, popular commercial sense, although I'm very interested to listen to Indian music and chants and prayers from India because I've been involved with Indian religion and philosophy for a long time and uh, since I was 15 and I'm over 60 now um so I'm a meditator and stuff a vegan and all that all that that whole trip so um while you know I don't listen to any kind of popular music I don't even know who any of those people are I don't watch television um I, I have my own thing that I'm into, and it's it's more to do with spirituality and the music of of India with deep chanting and and a great resonance. You know, I'm I'm looking for that that good side of the force that that propels everything and is from which everything is made. Right, right. And you know, for a lot of people that don't know, and um, I've had the you know privilege of learning some of these things through talking to you, but um, India is a great passion in your heart, um, so much so that you own the original robe and I believe the original mask from the Squid Game show, and you are now going to send it to an auction house so that it can well, raise money for a charity. Yeah, that's, okay, I'll straighten you out on that. Uh oh, okay. I, there, were, there were two robes, and I, I've been asked by my lawyers to make this very clear. There were two robes for Squid Game. Okay, okay. this is the, this is the second one. Okay, I asked, I asked them if I could uh, have the other robe, and apparently it's like a nine hundred dollar robe, all made of silk. Woo, so good lord! The costume department said yes, and then the producer said no in case we need it for a reshoot, which is fair enough. Right, <laughs> and. Um, so then they arranged for me to, to have another robe. It's exactly the same, same material and just the same. Right. Um, so I have, I have that robe, which I also had to pay for $800, which I was a little surprised about that, but I just put down a credit card and, and let's see. And I, oh, no, I don't have the mask. I have the original script and storyboards for the mm. film that I had with me the whole time I was in Korea. And it's got all my notes about what I'm going to have for lunch and what I'm going to meet. And, you know, so it's all, it's all sort of handwritten on. Um, Cause you, I always, I'm a person that, you know, if you see me on a, in a film, just out of frame is the script on the floor or somebody's holding it or something. I look at the, I don't want to mess up my lines. I'm really afraid about that. Right. I'm, I'm I'm compulsive about it. So the script is right there. So wherever I was in Squid Game for that two weeks that I was working on that film right. with all the stars, that script was with me. So that's going for auction. Um, and so is the robe. But the proceeds are going for my my charity in India, which is we we feed uh, it's called Food for All. And we feed women uh, widows from uh, the West Bengal region who have been kicked out of their houses, their husband died. And there's a superstition that they're witches. They brought about the death of the husband. doesn't matter how old or sick he was. And so these women are literally on the street 
And I, I met them in years ago in India and we've been feeding them as best we can ever since. Wow. That is, that is absolutely fantastic. Do you go back to India? I know you're in Thailand. All the time. All, all the time. That's one of the main reasons I'm in Thailand because it's just four hours on a plane to go oh. to New Delhi. Okay. And then I do extensive medita meditation retreats. You know, I mean, from your Star Wars point of view, it's like being a Jedi or something. <laughs> Woohoo! Seriously. Yeah. You know, it's, it's like we're looking for that. We're looking for that indefinable something that is the sort of energizer bunny of all life. Yeah. No, my mom, my mom is Buddhist and uh, she's been back to India a couple of times on some um, her, her temple here in the United States took, you know, a group trip back and they would go see different temples. So um, I, I've, I've definitely seen some photography and, and know what it's done for my mom. So I can I can imagine what that that was for you. You know, my, 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 my spiritual master once said to me, please don't be a common, ordinary, foolish man. And I, when, I, when you think about that, well, I mean, the streets are filled with common, ordinary, foolish men. doesn't mean you're better than them. It's that you're just trying to be to operate on a little bit higher level. It's kind of like you live simply, but you're you aim very high. But just like me. I'm from the poorest family. We didn't have a shower when I was a kid. Uh, we had to take a bath in the sink. I think when we were 11, my father put in a shower. So I was I had one or two, you know, one shirt or something, two shirts. And we had nothing. And um, now, you know, I'm sitting here in a beautiful, you know, house in Bangkok, very nice house. And uh, I've never had to worry about money for many years. And, you know, everything just kind of comes to me when you put yourself in line for that. Not that you're looking for any of that. And I don't care about any of that. And when I go to India, I live very, very simply. But um, when you kind of put yourself in the flow and the line of things, things just kind of happen. And also you accept what happens and that's life and also death and whatever in between. Mm -hmm. I think that's the real purport of the Jedi. Right, right, right. And I, I completely agree with you. W would you say that, um, you know, a lot of your life decisions and now I, you know, I, before I did all this, I was a preschool teacher, but before I did that, I was an artist for 10 years and I produced TV shows, live shows. I was a traveling spoken word poet. Um, I had a fantastic mentor who's on right now, Seven Kelly Bolt. Um, but uh, that that is to say that, you know, so many artists, their dream is to be able to live off their art in one way or another, whether they're musicians or painters or sculptors. Well, I, you, know, I, you know, look, here's the deal. Elephants eat many tons of food a day. They don't have a job. You know, they don't go to a factory. They don't click a, a time clock. Somehow or other, what you need, and this is pretty much across the board, is provided for you. What yes. you want is something different, and that's outside that kind of guarantee that life gives you. But if an elephant, can, it can somehow be arranged that for the duration of an elephant's life, which is what, very long? That they're giving you know a ton and a half of food it's just there for them every right. day and right that's right down to the sparrow and then to me and to us human beings i think you know pretty much we everything we need is 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 supplied for us by the mere fact that we're we're here in other words meals are included as i tell my son you know right, so right. It's like we're here and we're provided for if we, especially if we enter in consciously into the slipstream of of a higher consciousness, not to get too philosophical on your show, but um, everything I do feeds into that that uh, model uh, of of reality. Um, you know, there's many levels of reality. There's consensus reality, which we just okay, we're just a couple of guys here talking, and there's all kinds of realities. You know, when the Titanic hit the iceberg. It was just a little tip of the iceberg. There was a whole big iceberg underneath. That right. was the real, the real, the real iceberg. So the real reality, I think, is perhaps not which is readily accessible to our direct perception now in our consensus reality, but indeed is probably something much deeper. So I don't buy it that oh, live by your art or not live by your art. I buy it that everybody. Every living entity that's in this world is taken care of as they need and is required by the universe. Right. Well, now, now, oh, you know, I, you, man, you'll get me going. I'll get philosophical, and we'll sit here all night long. We'll just, I'll just let the stream go. But and then let me ask you that because you have been to India and you do a lot of traveling. How do you, how do you align that with, say, kind of like 
man's control of things that are given to us by nature, right? Like, so, I mean, we all could eat, right? There's, a, it's been proven many times there's enough food on the planet that every, there's no need for starvation. But because of man's controls on, on these systems, uh, you know, there are people that are starving when there is no need for that. There's housing in America that is sitting completely empty while people are sleeping in, in tents outside of that house two streets over. Well, that, that, that's, the, that's the greed of mankind. That's people wanting more than they need. Or as a friend said to me once, buying things they don't need with money they don't have. <laughs> so when, when you step outside the perimeter of what is automatically provided to you by the forces of nature, by the force, then indeed, uh, you re that's where you run into trouble. And, you know, there's so many people that give themselves over to drugs. I've had a lot of people around me get involved with drugs, and it's just young people destroyed their lives, you know, and they just they never came back. Right. I had a doctor once tell me, you know, that people can get so <laughs> broken that they're just broken. They don't come back. They never come back. They're broken, you know. And I've seen a lot of those human human tragedies around me in my life very came close to my life. And I've seen the, the fallout, you know, I got a swimming pool downstairs. Sometimes when I go down early in the morning and there's no wind, it's just like a sheet of glass. You'd think that if you jumped on it, you could like walk across it. And then the minute you say something or throw something in or put your toe in, there's all these ripples that come out ever widening ripples. Right. And in uh, and indeed, uh, that's kind of the cause and effect of what we do in this world. You know, everything we do has a direct reaction and you throw that stone in the pond and the ripples come out. I've seen people that were caught in the ripples of other people's behavior, oh, um, wow. you know, and, and, and not in a good way. So that that's happening all over the world. We have, you know, politicians. I won't say any names because I don't know uh, who your audience is rooting for. <laughs> One particular gentleman that I can't stand, uh, you know, and that's putting it mildly. I can't even come up with enough adjective to say how much I despise this well-known politician. I, we, we can guess who it might be, <laughs> but I won't say it, you know. Um, and I, I just think, like, if money was the answer, then, then some guy like Donald Trump would be the model for the world. And we know that he's not to be, to be diplomatic. Right. So money is not the answer. What is the answer? We're carbon based life forms. You know, we arise from some unknown place and we go to some unknown place. And, the, and we're sort of this. We are this carbon based life form with a computer up here that allows right. us to experience and assimilate uh, experience. So it's it's just it's just an incredible trip. You don't need to look for miracles in life. You don't need any of this stuff from Star Wars because it's true. It's right here. Life is magic. Life is a miracle. I'm from Alcott Beach, New York. I used to sit there on the back porch and go, I want to be a movie star. That's another thing. Whatever you want, the, uni the universe is your, are, are your, is your parent. So it's like, oh, your mommy and daddy love to give the kid what they want, you know? So I wanted to be a movie star. I wanted it so much that I am a movie star. Star yes. is debatable. You know, A list, B list, Z list, as somebody called me today on Facebook. But I make movies. And that's what I wanted to do as a little tiny, tiny boy. And that happened. And the George Harrison wanted to play guitar, you know, and Elvis wanted to sing. You get you get kind of where you invest yourself. You get that. Right, right. Well, this kind of, you know, I guess it's been debunked in some theories, but there's the uh the philosophy of the the 10,000 hours, right? If you put 10,000 hours into anything, you're going to get good at it. <laughs> well, you know, it's like I can remember my father coming to see me in a school play when I was about 5, and I wrote it, I directed it. It was a Christmas Carol Scrooge. And, and, and I did all this stuff and all the teachers are going, wow, this is amazing. You know, the other thing too is maybe this isn't the, everybody's fate. I've seen it a lot in life and I, I do believe that everybody has access to success, um, but so-called success. But I also have a theory because I came from a very ordinary family of not educated people. I was the first to go to college. I, I say it like this, that as the conveyor belt of souls was going by God or whoever, 
you know, he keeps a little uh, bag of fairy dust there. <laughs> and, and he said, oh, hold on. Every once in a while, I said, stop, hold on. And he puts his hand in the bag and he just sprinkles a little fairy dust on there. Okay, go ahead. What's the deal with that guy? I don't know. I just thought I'd put a little fairy dust, a little magic on this guy. Let it go. Okay. I think that's kind of what happened because there's no good reason that I should have been a world famous writer, you know, which is actually the biggest career that this is my second career. This, I never had any writing lessons. I had plenty of acting lessons, but I could always do it. It was something that came natural to me. So I, I, I it's maybe karma or, but I just say fairy dust and some people have it more, you know, obviously the Beatles had, and I'm not putting myself on that level by any means. Let's go on the assumption I'm a Z-list actor, okay? I'm not <laughs> anything like that. But um, we, you know, something happened. There's something around me that's special. I'm not special, but there's some force around me that's special that creates wow. these incredible opportunities. There's no question about it. Wow. That is an amazing way to look at it. That is that is absolutely fantastic. Um, you know, and, and in that, I mean, even today, um, and for those that aren't aware, um, our fantastic director, Ezra, is going to put up a, a whole bunch of links later on at the end. It's going to have your your YouTube uh, channel. It's going to have your IMD, uh, IMDB page. We're going to have all of those links so that people can and just If anybody wants to that. contact me for interviews or appearances and stuff, I've got a really good personal manager. He's a great guy. And I'm sure that we can, you know make that happen so yeah, get in anyway. touch jeffreygiuliano.com just get in touch and we'll work it out hey hey and if you uh if you're going to your local con find out who runs your local con and contact me and we will get mr giuliano out to uh, a town near you yeah <laughs> and then you can uh, learn I, I, words of wisdom you, there's one bit of news about the comic cons i i'm getting involved with a manager in england and i said to him you know because I have a lot of friends that are comedy writers and I've done stand up before. I said, how about this? How about if I do a, like a 10 or 15 minute stand up based on squid game? He said, Oh my God, that would be fantastic. He says, I could really sell that, you know, but it's rather than just autographs or sitting in a panel and a asking questions. I mean, I'll get up there and I'll do a little show for everybody. Right. Not difficult for me. I, I, I'm good friends with one of the head writers on the Simpson called Gary Apple. Right. And so oh. he, he said he would write, some stuff for me and i'll just i'm an actor i'll just perform it so that's that's a kind of something special i'd like to bring to to the comic cons is a is a stand-up comedy routine you know let, don't forget to let me uh, let us talk later because i have a connection with a uh, cartoon network for adult swim i didn't know you did comedy as well so we'll talk about that at any rate i um I, you know i think it's absolutely amazing all these different directions and you know what i think See, forget Comic Con. I didn't know all this. I think we're going to put you on a world tour doing, like, you know, like doing meditation sessions. Well, I think I people will come out and listen to you do that, philosophy. No, but I, could, I could do a one man show. Just <laughs> talk, talk about my life. You know, if you if you take a kid from from I lived that we lived on a cliff overlooking Lake Ontario in a in a very rundown but once very beautiful house. Um, if you take that kid, I used to go on the beach and break. You know, I had a little hammer and i'd find these rocks in the beach and i'd break them up open to see what was inside and very often i'd see beautiful crystals in there so i always since i was a little kid i looked deeper you know i wanted to see what was inside what things were made of you know and then what was my and also i remember there was a big tree on our our beach we had a beautiful big tree and there were all these uh moths in there that turned to butter monarch butterflies and in the spring, just thousands of monarch butterflies. I was, in, I was raised in a very magical environment. Um, and in Alcott Beach, New York, Niagara County, it's a lovely, lovely little hamlet. And, and, and you know, I just feel that, and I, we would, you know, out of our front window was Lake Ontario. And we could see Toronto over there, and the sun would come down, and it would light up the sky. So I was just, just bathed and breathe magic when i was a kid and i just feel some of that rubbed off on that's so cool i see people are wanting you to come out to tennessee they said they're mentioning a con in tennessee and uh uh, uh uh seven seven kelly is absolutely inspired by you and wants to do meditations with you 
That is fair. Oh, there's the Tennessee address. So yeah, if you know anybody at a con out there, contact me and we will get uh we'll get Jeffrey out there to come see you. Jeffrey is absolutely uh amazing to talk to. Now you've yeah, done I, I'm sorry we didn't talk more about movies. You know, I didn't mean to get to do this to you. I didn't mean oh, to no, push no, no. you with this with this stuff, but but you know, if you want to know like the artist's work is one thing, but today we've taken a deep dive into what motivates the artist. Yes. Where does that come from? You know, what is that wellspring inside of an artist that makes him motivate? Now, there's some really low uh, impetus for people to perform, like they didn't get enough love at home and they're seeking the approbation and approval of strangers because daddy wasn't there to take me to the fair. I guess he didn't care, you know. Um, but there's another level to this, too, which is I'm a completely confident man. You know, I'm a being in this universe, you know, and things don't happen to me. I make them happen, right? Yes, By the yes. force of who I am. But the, the next level to that is that Anthony Robbins doesn't know is where does that force come from? How does that inhabit us? From wow. where it has nothing to do with religion. It's nothing to do. It's nothing to not do with religion, but it's just a finer thing. Like, like you know, the body is the body and then there's the brain. And then there's the mind and then there's the intelligence and like the mind is the radio and the intelligence is that is the music from that radio. You can't catch hold of the intelligence. You can right. see the mind, you can cut it up, you can do a cross section, do anything you want, but that's not it. So maybe be, if you got this mind, this brain, this computer, this, this incredible magical organic computer, the thing that is going through that, making that fire off as intelligence. Well, what if there's something finer than intelligence? You know, it just right. gets finer and finer. You know, a friend of mine once said that we're only constrained by what we see by the size of our microscope or telescope. So it's, oh, that's how small the atom is. No, that's how small your, your uh, lens allows you to see right. how small the atom is. But if you had another uh, one, you could see it. And also with telescope, it's just like, so... It's an unlimited, vast life that we live. It's beyond birth. It's beyond death. It goes on forever. And it's it's from I'm able, uh, just because I am, I can't say exactly why, I can go to that well and draw that water, and then amazing, magical things happen in my life on a day-to-day, -day, sometimes hour-to-hour -hour basis. Right. So, you know, that's exciting. I mean, you know, I'm supposed to be depressed because I'm over 60. You know, you're an old guy. You don't look very <laughs> good anymore. But, you know, I'm, a, I'm always, in fact, I don't even feel any age. Right. Maybe 25 or something like that. It's right. only when I look, only the mirror has a problem. It creates a conflict in this regard, you know. <laughs> I'm 25, you know. The, right. mirror, the mirror would disagree. But right, what is right. it about, you know. Hey man, I, I run a lightsaber store. Believe me, I understand. <laughs> yeah, I mean, well, actually, we're, we're, we're two crazy peas in a pod. So what do you got? You got Jeffrey the lunatic and the guy who runs the saber store. <laughs> oh, no, a little funky. <laughs> now, uh, now we do have we do have about five more minutes. Uh, actually, we can go about five or ten more minutes, depending on we how got you feel. Question from anybody? Yeah, and you know, I'm seeing them down here. Hey, Ezra, if you see any specific questions, why don't you throw them up on there? Um, and then uh, and then we'll make sure that people get their specific questions answered. Uh, I know a lot of people were excited to see you. Now, okay, so we have we have talked a lot of um of uh of general things and philosophy, which absolutely everybody is enjoying. But let's let's talk about why a lot of people came to see you and how they know. They want to know about Squid Game and your your experience with it. Right, what do you want to know? I'll tell you whatever you want to know about. <laughs> I was there for two weeks. I saw that every day. All right, all right, all right. How do you feel that twenty five percent of Americans have seen your naked butt? <laughs> well, thank you for bringing that up. <laughs> I appreciate that. No, I mean if you put in Jeffrey Giuliano's butt. In Google, you can, images, you can like see it from a million different angles. I'll tell you what it has done. It's inspired me to lose weight, and I've lost a lot of weight. This thing, before Squid Game, I could not button. I can now button it. That's how I know what size I am. Because all, I, yeah, well, one of my indulgences is my clothes are handmade. 
but also I live in Asia. It's not that right, expensive. right, but, right. But I have all handmade clothes, and so I can button this. Uh, not exactly when I got it, but I'm getting back to where I was about a few years ago. What messed me up was when I went to India for six months. I got stranded there, and I had to eat that cheap food you know, full of oil and sugar and starch and carbohydrates. But anyway, let's talk about Squid Game. Squid Game was a huge set. Um, the Koreans, they don't really want to hang out with Western people or they can't or they're busy. Or, you know, I didn't feel much love coming. I didn't feel anything adverse, but there wasn't a big impetus for the Koreans to just mix around with the American actors. So right. we kind of stayed in our own, you know, places. Right. And the guy, Jun Ho, that everybody likes, the young guy with the, uh, you know, we won't go into the details. <laughs> um, but but uh, that guy is was a really good, I, I thought when I, now listen, I got a little, I thought, well, he's just a young guy, you know, just some goofy young guy, some kind of boy band star that, you know, I'm sure he can't act, but he can. He can act. And he was right. very good and quick and concentrated and quicker than me in a couple things, too. Right. I remember he kind of shook his head one time when I screwed up a line and he kind of shook his head and he had a right to. Um, but that was a weird shoot because normally like in Peninsula, like 60% um, of the dialogue I make up on the spot and I use the script as a skeletal structure. In this case, the guy didn't want any ad living and the lines were, shall we say, to be diplomatic, challenging. 69 days, 96 days, and right. eh. I had right. to say that stuff. I tried to rewrite it because I'm a writer. No, thank you, Mr. Giuliano. When I got on the set, I tried to ad lib around it. No, could you stick to the script? Right. So when you have a writer director, they're not going to let you change anything because right. my brothers and sisters are bled. They're not written. Right. So uh, I couldn't change anything. I was locked into exactly what that guy wanted me to, to say. God bless him. And I said it. And there's been a little controversy around that. Not too much, you know, but it was a stylized performance. And uh, obviously it worked out, you know, as I was just an unknown actor before. And now I'm known and controversial. And it, yeah, it was a life changing experience. But we weren't allowed to change anything. Uh, the hey. masks were so heavy, you could not see through them. I almost fell down several times. In fact, you can see that Jun Ho actor leading yeah. me off the stage. When I go off the stage, he said, I say, take your mask off. You know? <laughs> so, let's go somewhere where we can be alone. And I said, to the, uh, all right, well, you, you have fun. <laughs> I want to have my own kind of fun. And then you can see him take my arm and lead me off because we were on some risers, like a little step up, and yes. I could not see anything. So right. he was taking my arm and leading me off. So I, and the camera, you can't see. What happened? Ezra. I'm here. Hi. I don't know. Uh-oh. I, I think his internet went out. Oh, I'm just going to. All right. Why don't you message him really quick? I could see the questions flying in as uh, as Jeffrey uh, was um, was oh, was telling oh. us about Squid Game. Oh, is he coming back? On? Oh, there he is. Hello. Hey, hey there you are. Sorry. All right, we got you back. Okay, so so obviously we missed the little piece there. Hey, before you start again, though, the questions are flying in. We asked people if they wanted to ask questions, and then they started flying in. Um, people were asking, and you answered one of them. Uh, could you even see out of that mask? No. And obviously, the set looked like it was a very dark set. Am I correct? Yeah, it was a dark set, and there were these levels. There were these risers, and you'd have to step up, and I couldn't see. In fact, I had to refuse doing a piece if you notice all the vips coming down that stairway yeah. you don't see me coming down you just see them cut up to a close-up and i go yeah 69 hey that's my favorite number whatever i say right. i was on that stairway because they asked me to come down it was huge it was like 23 feet all the way down steep and right. we had brand new shoes on linoleum you just would have, you would, I would have fallen and gotten killed. I said, it's okay, Mr. Giuliano, just come down the stairs now, sir. So I can't do that. Right, right. What do you mean you can't do that? I'm going to fall. I'm going to die. I can't see out of this mask. And you weren't, you, you had to, you know, be very kind of high class. You couldn't go like this, but you're looking at your feet. Right. So you just kind of go down that, you know, big stairway. And I just, I said, I'm not doing that. 
So they, they stopped the camera. They had a meeting and everybody was huddled around. And they said, all right, so you go to the bottom of the steers and we'll just do a pickup, what's called a pickup shot at the bottom. And then the other guys can come down. But what right. they did is they did a tight shot so you couldn't see. It was clever. They didn't do a shot like a, a master shot where they're all coming down. Hey, where's Jeffrey? They right. did a tight shot. So they just kept it on three guys. And then they cut to me as if I was there. But right. I did not come down. I refused to do that. You know, and that, that's a very risky thing to re for an actor to refuse to do something, you know, right, 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 right. prima donna. But I said, no, if it's a safety issue, there's a couple of movies where I've, I've said no to things because it was not safe. And as we can see with Alec Baldwin, an actor, an actor has the right to not do things that he thinks aren't safe. That's, Let's that's take incredible. That we have. That, that's incredible. That's a great question. Now, Becky had a question back here. I saw Becky. Oh, she was interested in writing. Let's go back to that oh, one later. Wait, somebody, somebody, I just saw somebody ask, were those real human beings, the furniture, or yes. were they props? They were real human beings. And that girl, uh, I can't remember her name. She's a Mexican actress. And she, a lovely girl, and she had, she had her breast out. There were little pasties on the, the nipples. And I was told to put my head back in those breasts, and I didn't want to. <laughs> right, 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 right. I didn't want to, and they were big. She said she got it because she had big breasts. And okay, fair enough. She got four thousand dollars, folks. The, all the furniture people got four thousand dollars. <laughs> That's pretty good money. Um, and then, you know, for an actor, it's okay. So they said, put your head back, and I, I couldn't do it. And they said, no, no, come on, Jeffrey, put it back right in the breast. Right, and right, right. Me, it was just so embarrassing and so awkward and she was saying okay it's okay Joe. don't worry it's okay right. and um so you know and actually when i came out on that set because i'm from a in politically in incorrect generation i'd said something about her breast and then i went oh okay i'm so sorry i said that please forgive me that was totally inappropriate and oh no it's okay but you know it was it was more out of embarrassment that i said something right, so the right, people right. were they were um real the furniture was real now the guy who i had my feet on was a muslim oh and wow oh my goodness putting your feet on them the oh infidel. wow and i thought and i thought really you know i said what's your name abdul you know oh, oh wow. man this guy you know so i i i you know i'm i'm sensitive to the culture of every, i try to be respectful of everyone right <laughs> A lot of times people aren't respectful of me, but that's okay. I'm, I'm a big boy, but I try to like, oh, are you, oh, you're a Muslim. Salam alaikum, my brother. You know, I try to be cool with people. And, right. you know, but anyway, so that was one question. What else, what's another question? That, that's going to make that scene so much cringier to watch next time, knowing that that poor general, that gentleman. Well, they had Muslim to lead and... me off. You can see that they had to physically lead me off. It actually isn't, it isn't good. It's, right. it's a bit awkward, but I, I'm sure no one can. Now you won't be able to unsee it when you watch it but right. they're leading me off and the guys were furniture and the guy had my feet on was a muslim and the other girl the, uh, the mexican actress told me she had the biggest breast in korea and you know and i had to put my head right in there and go ahead relax put your head in there with the breast you know and it was it was it was tough and also they sent they sent me a a note about three weeks before i came over to korea and they said what's the measurement of your eyes what are you talking oh, the about? The I don't know what that is, that your eye opening. Right. I, they didn't tell me I was going to wear a mask. Right, right. Wow. So I, I just put down half an inch, but apparently that's like a little slit, so I just could poop. The other thing about those masks is they were real. They were like that thick. They weren't wow. like a mask, like you would have a Halloween mask. They were big, thick. Was it foam Sometimes or was it was it uh, plastic? They were, or what? they were plastic and they were held on. It looked like plaster. Those mirrored things were all hand put on. That those masks were worth a fortune. For a second, I thought, well, I wonder if I can have the mask. But you know, you when you're an actor, it's like people I know. I know people who work for the Beatles and they used to like write their lyrics down and like just throw them away in the garbage. You know, if I was there, I'd be taking the garbage. I'll take the garbage out. You know, yeah, yeah, you yeah. all that stuff at Sotheby's now. But um, it was it. I'm an actor. I'm a professional. And it, I, I was kind of cheeky of me to ask for the row. You know, that was kind of above and beyond. But they were paying such attention to me and gave me so much money and big, beautiful, sweet private suite and servants and everything that I thought, well, 
I'll be a bit of a movie star. Excuse me, could I have my wardrobe? <laughs> That's fantastic. Now, were there anything that um, we didn't really get to see? I know as an actor, you're going to do several different takes of a different scene, but was there anything that stood okay, out in I, your I mind? Got a good one. I got a good one. It, my first line in the movie is, listen, I'm, uh, I'm willing to cut anybody some slack. But I didn't say cut. I said, listen, I'm, I'm willing to give anybody some slack. That's not a problem. Now, I knew that I should have said, Shh, crap. I should have said cut slack. Now, I looked it up in the dictionary. And you, it does say that you can. it's correct grammatically to say you're going to give somebody some slack. But right. everybody knows the common usage, I'm going to cut you some slack. Right, but I right. didn't say that. And on the first take, but on the second and third and fourth, I think there was four takes of that. I said, I am going to cut you some slack. But they didn't use the correct grammatically correct English. Why? Mm. Because they're Korean editors that don't speak English. And right. they could do that subtle difference. Right, right. So but now it's when I watch that line, I cringe a little bit. And you can see me hesitate a micro millionth of a second before I said, well, I put my head down. I say, well, you know, uh, I can give anybody some slack. I, I'll do that with anybody. Right. And you can see my head because I knew that I screwed it up, but I kept going. Now, there's a trick they teach you in drama school. If you don't like, they won't stop it because it costs money. They won't stop a take. But if you don't like the take and you're not supposed to take advantage of this, you go, oh, oh I forgot my line or I tripped. You do something to make it so they have to stop. You right. screw it up. That's an old actor's trick. Right. And I, I almost did that. I was thinking, you can watch me thinking about it. The wheels are turning. I'm going, should I stop the take? But I didn't stop the take, and I should have because they used the wrong take. Right, right, right. Uh, really quick side question, but I, I definitely want to come back because I have some others for this. Uh, Stephen Jordan says, what's the thing that you've done uh, in your work that you've been most proud of? Publicly... Train to Busan, I felt was, or Peninsula, I felt was Robert De Niro level, super realistic acting. Dennis Hopper is probably my favorite actor, and I've always kind of imitated him. And I mean, I, Peninsula is pretty much a flawless uh, performance, I feel. Um, and it, I mean, that guy's a real, you know, he's saying, don't worry about those zombies. At the, I hear they're afraid of the dark. Just go in there and get the money, whatever it is. It just, it just clicked. Now, at the time, I thought I was screwing it up. And there's an interesting phenomenon. They had a girl there that was doing the final edit as we did it. Instead of taking all that footage, I know people think they take all that to some place, office, and they sit there and edit it. That's not how they do it anymore. They right. do it on the spot. And, the, on and the, the first first assistant director said, would you like to see your scene? What do you mean? Come on. And then it was the actual thing that you see in the movie was done as we did it. They would they would do the scene. Um, so. It was. 50 percent, the editor and 50 percent me that made my role in Peninsula one of my favorites. Wow, that's absolutely fantastic. Um uh, let's see, Kevin here. Uh, says, wait, who, who, what is the most unusual thing in your travel to Korea or Thailand? Yeah. Um, okay. I'll tell you what it was. You couldn't get any vegetarian food in Korea and they didn't really know what that was. Like wow. I, said, I don't eat meat. So the guy would come to the door and he'd have like a donut and some <laughs> yogurt full of sugar and some orange juice that was just water and some concentrate crap. And I said, no, I mean, I can't eat that, you know, what? Right. No, I can't eat that. And then, then the alternative was they gave me a great big thing of rice. So they don't know. I, I saw a few things culturally there. The, uh, one thing, because, you know, you talk to people, homosexuality is definitely kept in a closet there. You know, right. they're not allowed to be openly whatever. Um, culturally, you know, and um, they're very much looked down upon. And they don't have any idea what vegetarianism is there i mean it's not in their food it's not in their what's that gumshi or what's that thing that they got gumshi Kim, gum kimchi yeah i i hated it <laughs> oh what's this? Well, it's spoiled cabbage that we keep around for 10 years enjoy you know 
So right. I, I, didn't like, I, I, I didn't have anything to eat over there. Finally, I found a 7-Eleven. And I would, <laughs> go and I would get, like, and there'd be like a, it'd say garden sandwich. And it would like be, you know, a salad. But then there'd be a piece of chicken on there. And oh. I just have to like take the chicken off and put it in the garbage and take a little Kleenex and try to wipe it off. <laughs> no, I was, and I ate sun chips. They right. had sun chips. So I was eating sun chips all day. It, right. was, it was just it was the worst food I ever had. And also, I felt that the Korean people, I won't say unfriendly, but they're very determined to make money and do business. They're serious people. Well, I, heard, I heard that is the, the little sister of America. <laughs> no, well, but we, I mean, I joke around all the time. In fact, I'm too loose. You know, I should be a little more, a lot more reserved in the way I speak. But, you know, one of the things that people say is that I'm an honest guy. Now, we, got, we must have time for a couple more questions. I don't want to filibuster. Yeah, I we do. And, you know what? I want to get to some of these questions. But before I get to these questions, I want to remind people, because obviously, man, they're flooding in right now. And we're not going to have a chance to get everyone. But if you have questions, you can talk to Jeffrey Giuliano personally through his Facebook Squid Games page. What is, remind people, that's called VIP4. VIP4 Squid Game Universe. If you come there... We run contests every week, one contest contest a week with five winners. And what is the prize? Well, I'll talk to you through making a video for you, doing a shout out, saying something to your mother for your birthday, whatever. I'll make an exclusive video and I'll send it just to you. We ask some trivia questions and, you know, just a fun interactive. It's a very, I, I, it's probably the most interactive page on Facebook. You know, it's like, oh, this is a page of the cast members of squid game and they're actually here and yes. they read everything and i'm an admin so yes. it's like i when i'm in bed i'll just you know i got nothing else to do in bed being over 60 so i just look at facebook you know <laughs> so like, ding, ding 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 and so i just look at it like you know i'll take it when i have a break i'll look at what's going on with the page so we have only 300 people but we only been in business for a week we need 3,000 people. We need 30,000 people. We need 300,000 people. So, so everybody, everybody who's um, watching tonight uh, needs to join that page. Make sure to check out uh, uh, it's VIP4 Squid Game. Uh, Squid Universe. Please Universe. come. Out. We, we, we just hang out. We do we do what we're doing now on Facebook. So please join us. And if, and we, don't get, the if we can't get to your questions today, we'll get to them on VIP4 Squid Game Universe on Facebook. Most definitely. And uh, also your IMD ba uh, B page. I encourage people to check okay, that out. Okay, check so out your other projects. Internet Movie Database runs the popularity and the, uh, that you have. It gives you a lower score because you're trying to get to number one, obviously. And we need people to go to there and click a few things and look at a few things because that takes my that lowers my score so that I can get more work. Any major studio. That's the Bible. They look at your score. What's a score? He's number 500. Bring him in because there's people there that are like 3 million. I right. think I'm 1400 right now, or I was last week. It changes all the time. So if you want to help me, you can go to Jeffrey Giuliano at Internet Movie Database and click, stay a couple of minutes, click a few links, and that will make my score better so that I can get more work and see you much quicker in a meaningful performance in a movie theater near you. Hey, you know, I just went to, uh, I took my son to the Eternals, the Marvel movie last night, and they've got 10 main cast members there. So it's my philosophy that soon enough, Marvel is going to come looking for you because they're going to run out of actors in Hollywood. They're going to have to find every other actor they can. Marvel is a huge, well, how would you feel about that? How would you like to be a superhero? Could you do a Marvel movie? Yeah, man, I can do anything. I mean, I'm an look at my book. Go to go to jeffreygiuliano.com and go to the cinema section, and you'll see all my different characters that I play. I'm a character actor. I don't play right. myself. I know you've I been in Scorpion King three. You were the bad guy in uh, Scorpion King yeah, three. I think them. There's a, a little known movie I did with the guy from Prison Break. I don't know. I can't remember his name. Um, but um. We, uh, yeah, I play a Viking in there, a Viking guy, like hey, yeah, Viking. So, um. I can do anything. I, I played a woman, a transsexual once uh, in, a, in a TV show. So I can do 
I, you know, I, you know, I'm not the greatest human being. I'm not the best father. I'm not the best citizen of the world. But acting, I know how to do this. <laughs> All right. Hey, Becky was asking, how does someone get right started in writing? You got, you said you. That's kind of where you uh, you found your niche, even though it wasn't your Look, first it's, passion. It's I, I was sent to uh, Toronto to portray Ronald McDonald in those TV commercials you saw when you were a little kid. That was me. I remember um, that. I remember that. We haven't even talked about all of that. You have the well, that's craziest why that's, McDonald's that, that, that's story. You have to bring me back, my brother. We that's, will do that. There, you know? <laughs> so when I was when I was Ronald McDonald, um, uh, uh, I, we, I, I left the job and we were stuck in Toronto and I didn't have any money. And I looked under P for publishers and called up a publisher and said, you know, I know a lot about the Beatles. Maybe you'd like a book. And they said, hold on a minute. And the guy got on the phone and he said, we've been looking for a book in the Beatles. Come right down. And they wow. gave me a big check. And that, see, that could never happen. Basically, I'm not a guy to give advice about anything because all the stuff that's happened to me could never happen again. <laughs> right. That's and if you get back to that magic thing, putting yourself in the slipstream of success and it all comes to you. Right. Right. I, I love it. I, I agree. Um, I'm sure that's not the answer you were looking for, Becky, but uh, you know what? Okay, you well, I'll, 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 give, I'll give, no, I can give you an answer because I'm a professional writer and wrote 32 books. You, you have to, in order to be a writer, you have to be a reader. Read, 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 and then write. And the art of writing is the art of rewriting. It might, that somebody, some people say first thought, best thought, that's true. But after that first thought, best thought, read it over a thousand times and tinker with it until you get it just the way you want it. Uh, there's so many venues to put your writing out on the Internet and places like that. That You know, it, look, here's the thing about anything like this. If you really want to do it, if it's in your heart, if it's who you are, it'll happen for you. Morgan Freeman didn't really get an acting job till he was 50. Yes. And he said, one, he said, this is the quote, once things tilted up, they never tilted down. I'm hoping that's what happens for me. You know, it's not like I'm just some dude that like wants everybody to like me and make a lot of money. I have I have an agenda. I have a mission. I want to help those widows from from West Bengal, India. You know, I want to do some good in this world before I shuffle off this mortal crawl. I have a teenage son to raise. So it's not just like some lunatic who's just trying to get something for himself. It's not like that. So, I mean, right. if anyone deserves to like have the power, I think I'm one of them. Right, 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 right. I think it would uh, you, a lot of good can be done in your hands. Um, I'm excited about this tour that you're you're going on as well. Man, we've talked about so much, and you know what? It, I, I can see the boards lighting up here. It looks like we're going to have to bring you on again, whether you want to or not, because no, I people want to. can't get enough of you. <laughs> but just, just, go, just, just, just put a little bed in the studio there, <laughs> and I'll you know, just throw me some like I like. Um, I like Fritos, you know, <laughs> and I like Sun Chips, you know, um, I like. Um, hey, I think uh, we can do better for you than, than Korea. I'll just <laughs> live in the studio, man. You know, I can it's, clean up when there's no show, kind of like, you know, sweep around. This is this is this is California. We've got plenty of vegan restaurants here that we can take you to. <laughs> hey, um, before we get going, I have had an absolute pleasure talking to you. Is there anything you would like to leave people with? If, if uh, you know, maybe yeah, we, somebody... we, we, you know, I, I'm, I'm the VIP. So I've, I've made a club called the Vipers VIP. Yes. Right. So I want I want to make that a worldwide phenomenon. And I want Vipers. the Vipers to come together. Let's meet up at uh, VIP for squid game universe on Facebook and let's make our plans and let's change the world together as Vipers, man. Join the club. Baby. I love it. I absolutely love it. Also, we're going to let people know you have a Facebook and Instagram page. Um, uh, Instagram and yeah. Well, Instagram. my Instagram is Jeffrey Actor, G E O F F R E Y A C T O R. And my TikTok is TikTok. That's um, another one. Squid Game Confidential. Oh, exactly. and I, I think I'm doing an audio book about my experiences on Squid Game, which will be out in about three weeks before Christmas, just in time for Christmas. And then also I'm writing a book called Squid Game Confidential with a major publisher. Um, and that's coming out in about a year. 
Oh, I'm so excited. That is going to be fantastic. Oh, yeah, there join, is... join, the, join the Viper squad. You're be all Viper. You're all beautiful. Cut, let's let, hit me up on uh, on uh, VIP for Squid Game Universe on Facebook. That's VIP for Squid Game Universe on Facebook, and we will we will get it all together, man. We'll we'll make it happen. And everybody, bring ten friends with you. Don't come to the party alone. Absolutely, <laughs> Jeffrey Giuliano. It has been an absolute pleasure talking to you tonight. I want to thank you for taking time all the way across on the other side of the planet to to talk to us here in Vacaville, California. We have had such a good time. Vacaville is where Charles Manson was in prison. Actually, yeah, it is. I actually, I, I, my, my ex fiance's mother was a prison guard personally for Charles Manson. She has like these little dolls that Charles yeah. Manson made. They made of hair and years. toenails and stuff. Yes, yes, that's what it was. <laughs> it was made out of like bed length and like stuff he had taken off his. You know, oh, Absolutely. they were creepy. I got to see him. That she had him on her fireplace. <laughs> All right, my friend. Well, we're going to keep you away from the, the, all the lunatics. But thank you very much from Vacaville, California. We will talk soon, my friend. You have a beautiful uh, morning for you. Yeah. Well, thank you very much. Um, don't forget to send me the URL. When will the when will this be posted? Like automatically? It's happening right now. It's on YouTube as we speak. It's on Facebook I and Streamyard. URL as we sign off. And I'd like to say, you know, we love you so much. All the people that love Squid Game. And and you know, let's keep up that energy. It's such a beautiful energy, and we're we're gonna we're gonna get together, and it's it's gonna be a beautiful world for all of us. Okay, there you go, Vipers. <laughs> bye bye. Well, I'll do my exit now. Bye bye. <laughs> no. Listen, I'm willing to give anybody some slack. That's not a problem. <laughs> I just have to say that I'm a difficult man to please. I hope you won't disappoint me.